Good morning, everybody. Happy New Year. And to everyone watching at home, Happy New Year. Um, has everybody had a good year? <laughs> it's been a bit of a rough one, hasn't it? It's been um, a very strange year for, um, I think, even probably some of the older people here among us may not remember a, a, a year that's been as odd. Um, although we, we haven't been through, you know, wartime situation, we haven't been persecuted like Christians are in some countries, you know, chased around with kind of torches and pitchforks. That's how I imagine persecution might be. I don't know if that's what it really would be like. Um, we've had no real famines here, apart from toilet paper, possibly. I don't know if that counts. Um, and although we are in a, a kind of an official pandemic, it's not the real pestilence where you've got bodies piling up in the streets. Um, but it has been a bad year, and I know sometimes we feel like we might not be experiencing the best of what God has to offer. Um, we often talk about the promise in Scripture, um, Jeremiah 29, 11. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. Now, although I like my King James Version, that's not how I hear it quoted all the time. I think most of you probably hear this NIV version. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. But it seems through this pandemic, the only people really prospering have been the billionaires. Like Jeff Bezos. Would anyone like to guess how much more wealthy he got through the pandemic? Anyone know? You, you can say it, but you can't shout it. Third, got 30 billion. Any advance on 30 billion? No, he made another 90 billion dollars through this pandemic. Um, Bill Gates, anyone want to guess how much he earned through the pandemic? 200 million? No, he got 20 billion dollars more. That's how much these people have increased their wealth. So they prospered during this time. Um, anyone else here feel like they prospered? Not particularly, no. Um, regular folk seem to have done the worst out of this, uh, with small businesses being shut down, um, you know, depression and loneliness on the increase. Um, I think altogether the, the world's top billionaires added... 434 billion to their collective wealth. As believers, we've been restricted in the practice of our faith, um, general liberty, along with everyone else. It's easy to forget that in God's plans for us, our time here on earth is significant, but it's a small part of his plan compared with our final destination. We often focus a lot on our circumstances, our plans here on earth, our ambitions, our jobs, our situation. Paul said, um, this is in 1 Corinthians 15, 19. If in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of all men most miserable. And I think some versions say to be pitied above all men. And so what that's saying is although our life in Christ gives us hope and an assurance here, if there were not the promise of eternal heaven with Jesus, then it would be pitiful to go through all the persecution, all the hardship, the mockery, whatever you might face for, for, for the rewards that you get in this life. So the rewards that are promised us in eternity are more significant than we can imagine. Whatever happens down here, our final destination is our ultimate hope. In 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 2, verse 9, Paul says, But as it is written, I has not seen nor ear heard, neither has entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for them that love him. And Paul's actually quoting from Isaiah there, um, 64, verse 4. It says, For since the beginning of the world... 
men have not heard, nor perceived by the ear, neither hath the eye seen, O God, beside thee, what he hath prepared for him that waiteth for him. So our final reward is going to be more than we can imagine as humans. Uh, more than we've ever seen or heard. It can be easy to glibly say this, to say heaven's going to be more than we could possibly imagine or hope for. And then just leave it as that, as kind of a, an unsubstantiated hope. Um, but I like to let my imagination run wild sometimes. Um, I can imagine some quite good stuff, you see, in some of my more ambitious daydreams. Um, whatever the best of this world has to offer will be surpassed by life in heaven with Jesus. When I was younger, like many children, I used to dream of having lots of toys or lots of sweets. So, but the best of what I could imagine back then, I used to like my Star Wars figures. So, you know, Christmas, getting a new little Star Wars figure or, a, a, you know, an X-Wing fighter or whatever it might be was very exciting. And I used to dream of having the full set of the big Millennium Falcon and the Death Star and all that kind of stuff. So the best that I could imagine back then was stuff like that. A, a full set of Star Wars toys would be beyond my imagining. Um... Or, you know, one of my favourite sweets was rum, these little rum truffles that you get, you know, with the little chocolate bits on the outside. So I'd imagine, like, you know, a bathtub full of those. Um, but as an adult now, those things would be within my reach if I chose to get them. But that's not what I want anymore. As, as our intellect develops and as we mature, our desires and what we crave becomes more complicated um, and nuanced, I suppose you might say. Um, so as a child, I probably couldn't appreciate the fine points of, say, we, like me and Nadia watch MasterChef professionals at home, and you see some of these fancy meals, you think, oh, that looks amazing. Now, if as a four-year-old child someone had put one of those in front of me, I wouldn't have got it. I wouldn't have appreciated it. Um, and similarly, if someone had played me, you know, the best guitar solo by my favourite artist now, when I was younger, I, I probably wouldn't have appreciated it as much as, you know, a simple nursery rhyme. Um, in a similar way, whatever you can imagine now, the most outlandish, mind-boggling thing you can imagine will be utterly surpassed by what? your experience will be in heaven. In John 14, verse 1 to 3, Jesus said, Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. And we know that Jesus has been preparing this place for almost 2,000 years now. It only took him six days to make everything we now see and experience. Every good thing that we can experience now was part of what was made in six days and is quite old and under the curse of sin and death. So there's going to be no regrets in heaven. When we get there, we won't lament over missed opportunities think, oh, we wish we'd done this, wish we'd done that, wish we'd had time to go kind of see this site or this country or this place, wish we'd skydived or abseiled or whatever it might be. There will be no missed experiences, possessions, anything like that. Nothing you sacrifice or get taken away from you or deprived of or miss out here on earth will cause you any regret in heaven because it will seem primitive compared to what we can experience up there. It will be children's toys when we get there. There will be nothing you can miss out on here that will cause you any regret in heaven. You won't wish it you'd driven a faster car or had a bigger house or a floatier boat. Sorry, Bob, I don't know what the, the kind of correct, kind of good thing for a boat is, but... Uh, you won't wish you'd been more successful or popular or famous. 
Um, like one of my favourite things is perfect crispy bacon. I don't know. Does anyone else a fan of? Or yeah, crispy bacon. Crispy bacon. Um, the trouble is, it's not perfect, is it? Because for starters, a poor pig has to die to give you that bacon. That's not something we like to think about, is it? Um, also, it's high in salt, it's high in cholesterol. Um, and if I kind of overindulge in bacon, it dehydrates me and I get a headache. There's, but So even the most perfect things we can imagine here have downfalls. Um, but, you know, if my imagination ran wild, I could say, right, a bacon tree, a crispy bacon tree. So you wake up in the morning, Ethan, pop out to the tree and pick me some bacon. And it comes off the tree perfectly hot and crispy. Possibly with a, a dippy egg yolk bush as well. You can, you know. So your imagination can run wild with all sorts of things, can't it? The biggest house, the fastest car, you know. Whatever it might be, you're not going, you don't have the capacity to imagine something better than what awaits us in heaven. We can use these things as a benchmark. It's obviously, there isn't going to be a crispy bacon tree in heaven. You know, that would be ridiculous. But I know, <laughs> I know what's there will be better. I have to trust God and have faith that, that what awaits us there is far beyond our wildest imaginings. We can't take anything from this experience, from this life, from this, the possessions here with us to heaven. But there is something we can take with us. That's the brothers and sisters that we make here. When we share this hope through Jesus with people who don't know him, or when we help our brothers and sisters stay on track through times of difficulty and hardship, what we're doing is helping to take people with us up to heaven. Now that's what we can do, and that's what we can invest our time in. And those things we will not regret. So we can rejoice in the hope of our future, knowing what awaits us will be better than anything we could have here. And we can share this hope with people, especially during these times when hope is running quite thin out there. So let's just pray. Father God, in these times of, of hopelessness and despair, we have a message of hope. Lord, and we just want to pray that you would help us to rejoice in that, to lift one another up with it, and to share it with those who don't have that hope. We just pray, Lord, that as we uh, worship you and listen to your word this morning, we pray that your spirit would move amongst us and fill us up. Um, to just strengthen us against these times. And we pray that you'd be glorified above all. In Jesus' name, amen. Right, and I'm singing as well now, if you've not already got tired of my voice. <laughs> Okay, feel free to stand up and join us if you want to.
trust in Jesus' name.
spoke your name into the night. Then through the darkness, your loving kindness told through the shadows of my soul. The work is finished, the end is written. Jesus Christ, my living hope. Who could imagine so great a mercy? What heart could fathom such boundless grace? The God of ages stepped down from glory to where my sin and bear my shame. The cross is spoken. Praise the Lord. He is our living hope. Amen. Praise his name. Hardest thing in the world not to sing. But when you get outside, you can shout at the top of your voice. Praise the Lord, because he is our living hope. Amen. Thank you for leading us through that worship time there. I want to wish everybody a happy new year too. Everybody who's Watching at home, Happy New Year. 
Uh, pray you really have a great and blessed year. Uh, just remind you as well, you know, that to uh, keep up with, with watching if you're not here, or, you know, if you're here today, obviously you can't watch it, but you can watch it again when you get home as well. But, you know, let, let's keep the fellowship, let's keep uh, in touch with each other, let's keep watching and, and enjoying the, the, the blessing of the Lord. Uh, we're already in 2021, so couldn't say much before it came, but anyway, we're already in it now. But uh, I wonder if anybody, anybody made any New Year resolutions. Didn't hear many this year because obviously we weren't together very much. But um, who's made a, a resolution like, uh, well, I know Carl's already made one, a diet. Who's on a diet and for the New Year resolution? He's, he's, he's already lost a bit of weight. Well, I've made a resolution, and anyway, I'm on a diet. <laughs> who made an, a resolution of more exercise, or uh, here's a good one. Who, who made a resolution to spend less money and, and not stop contributing to those guys getting even richer? <laughs> stay off Auto Trader. Oh, sorry, shouldn't have said that, should I? <laughs> stay off Amazon, stay off eBay. Who's made a, a resolution? Uh, I'm going to go to bed earlier and get a bit more sleep, get up earlier. Uh, or maybe I'm going to watch less telly. That's not a bad thing because after watching all the graphs and predictions, you'll be proper down in the dump, so stop watching it. <laughs> and there's another point to make there as well, you know, that whilst we sit and watch the television for hours on end, doesn't time just disappear? Time seems to just disappear. In fact, time has gone so fast. It goes so fast. And let me just remind you that you don't get time back. Time goes, it clicks past, and other days clicks past, and days turn into weeks, and weeks turn into months and years, and they disappear so quickly. So since we're in church today, uh, you know, and I'm glad that we're here today, and I really want the presence of God to fill this place. I want you to be blessed. I want you to be lifted in your hearts and in your spirits, and it's so great to see each one of you. Uh, I'm, I don't know, I just felt so blessed to see Nevin Kath. I don't know, really pray God really keeps you and protects you and blesses you. Uh, you know, and uh, I'm picking on the old one. Viv and Jackie, I'm so blessed to see I'm so blessed to see each one of you here today. And I really believe that God has got some great and special blessings for you and for us as his church. But since we're in church, I want to say this, that this is the day that the Lord has made. And this is the year that the Lord has made. So if you've made a resolution for 2021, I want to say that each day is a day that the Lord has made. And this is the year that the Lord has made. And so Carl talked about, about the time when we get to heaven and, and time will be no more. And a lot of things will be different. And, and I, I have an imagination as well of how heaven might be and the things that, that you like here in this world, but they're going to be paling into insignificance for the things that will be there in heaven. But you know, we're in the meantime, aren't we? We're living in the meantime, and I really believe, and I know that God has got some great and amazing blessings to pour down into our lives here whilst we're living in the meantime. So I want to remind you that this is the day that the Lord has made. This year is the year that the Lord has made. And it says, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. And so I want us to be rejoicing and glad in it, despite, like, I didn't really want to mention this stuff that's going on right now. But you know what I do want to say is, is push all that aside. That's not going to stop the blessings of the Lord being poured into our lives. It's not going to stop his will and purposes being fulfilled through him, through here in this church, through us in our lives. That's not going to stop anything. So what I'd like to, to say to you this morning is why not set some objectives this year that you can achieve? Like read the Bible through in a year. Or maybe pray a little bit more than you used to do. I, I've put it in and pray maybe 15 minutes a day. Maybe get into a routine. Make a place. Mention something a bit old-fashioned, the prayer closet. But spend some time. What I want to say is that these two things hold the secret to enable you to live an exciting, strong, and successful Christian life. They are encapsulated in those two things. And that is read the Bible and pray. 
There is no substitute for those two things. Are you ready for this one? The, as, as I was go, going through these things in this year of 2021, why not give more? You know, tithing, that's giving something out of your, out of your money, is an act of worship. And it says this in, in uh, Corinthians. It says, each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to bless you abundantly so that in all things, at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. So why not in, in this year give a little bit more? You know, when you give, when you give into our church here and tithe into it or give gifts into it, do you know what that's doing? It is simply enabling others to do the work that you yourself can't do to extend the kingdom of God. To enable the, God's kingdom to, to, be, to be able to fulfill, I mean, our church here and everything that goes on here. It enables this to carry on and do it. It enables to, to, uh, well, to pay people, to do the work. Got a couple of more. I'm going to come back to something in a minute. But I, I have some thoughts for you here for this 2021 and what you can achieve. First of all, it's good to set out something that you can achieve and then you have something to work towards. Uh, there's a, there's a, a line in a, a song or in a film and it says that you can't have any dreams to come true if you don't have any dreams to begin with. And so if you set out in this, in this early part of 2021 to set out some things to achieve. But I want to remind you of something straight away. I want to say this. We don't live in the past. 2020 has gone. I don't know if you had any failures in 2020. I had a few. I'm sure you had a few. But it says this in Philippians. It says, don't dwell on those things behind. It says, forgetting what is behind, you strain to what is ahead. He said, I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ." Jesus. So, you know, I quite like New Year's because it kind of helps me to draw a line in the sand, as it were. So you draw a line and you can say, those things now are behind me. But, uh, but let me just put something else in there as well, is that we can put our failures behind us, but we can build on our successes. Now, I don't know, know the full details of everything, but I know this, that there was something come out the other day that in 2020, over 3,000 meals were given out from bellies, not bin, bins. So, Jill, I don't know if you could just clarify a few. Is that right? Have I got that right? I think it's mainly the 26th of March. So, if someone knew it through lockdown starts, that That's bellies. That's bellies. So, it doesn't... Over 1,000 meals. Over 1,000. Over a thousand. Over a thousand meals and two thousand at Bellies. So three thousand. So you could say we've got some successes there. And I'd like to say a huge thank you to you who have done all that work. <laughs> Can I read you something from Isaiah? Because I read this last this week, last week, and it just sprung into my mind of exactly what's happening. And in Isaiah chapter 58 it says. Well, it, Isaiah was speaking to the people of Israel because they'd been fasting and God hadn't been replying to their, to their prayer requests through their fasting. And he says, this is why I'm not replying, because you've not been doing this. And so he starts to instruct them on what they should do. And he said, you should feed the hungry and help those in trouble. And he says, and then your light will shine out of the darkness and the darkness around you will be as bright as noon. And I just want to remind you that Ruth said a couple of weeks ago about light. One thing that is good, although it used to happen anyways, is that all of the words that are shared on, that are through, our, through our online services <clears throat> are on the website. And you can go back, listen to them again, watch them again. And so I, I recommend, you know, instead of maybe watching the telly so much, watch, watch a couple of the, of the uh, services 
and be reminded of the great things that have been said to us over the last 12 months through this lockdown period. And Ruth said a couple of weeks ago about the light. So Isaiah was saying to the children of Israel that feed those who are hungry and your light will shine in darkness. And I also want to say a huge thanks to everybody else who has been working over the last nine months since this lockdown period to enable us to do the services that we're doing, to enable us to fulfill the things that we're doing in church, which is so different. <clears throat> Let me read this. He said, Lord, and I pray, send now prosperity. By the way, I was reading from Psalm 118 when it said, this is the day that the Lord has made. And it goes on in Psalm 118. And it said, Lord, I send, Lord, I pray, send now prosperity. And I've just had to pause there and put a couple of comments in here. Because what I want to say is, amen. Let the year 2021 be a year of prosperity. I pray that you have a year of prosperity. I'm going to say a couple of practical things here. Don't get into debt. Or don't take on debts that you can't afford to repay. Adjust your lifestyle. Pay off your debts. And ask God to help you achieve it. Now, I know that CAP does a great work in helping people in that predicament. And when people get in the predicament of debt, let me tell you, it's not just a millstone round their necks. It's two millstones round their necks when people get into debt and are unable to resolve and to get out of it. But we thank the Lord today for CAP, and CAP works through our church here. And we pray that in, in, in 2021 that we can help people to relieve themselves and get out of that debt. It says... He said, I pray, Lord, send prosperity. Uh, that's the uh, King James Version, by the way. But in the NLT version of that same verse, it says, Lord, give us success. So I'm going to pray today that you and our church have a successful year in 2021. And listen to what it, say, it goes on to say. It said, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We have you have been blessed from the house of the Lord. God is the Lord. That's from Psalm 118. What I want to say is we are blessed when we come in the name of the Lord. Let me remind you today, you know, that your faith is in the Lord. Your faith is in God and you are blessed when you come in the name of the Lord. So I pray today that, that in this year of 2021, despite whatever else is going on, that you are blessed with a successful year. Skylar agrees anyway. And it goes on to say, and he has given us light. And that's something else that Ruth referred to a couple of weeks ago about light. And it goes on in that verse and it says, bind the sacrifice with cords to the horns of the altar. So I've just put a little note here. You can ask Viv about that. He can explain about those Bind the sacrifice with cords to the horns of the altar. When he speaks in a few weeks' time, he can explain that if he wants. But this is all from Psalm 118. And it says, You are my God, and I will praise you. You are my God, and I will exalt you. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. For his mercy endures forever. I want you to take some of these verses into 2020 and 21. You are my God, and I will praise you. In Psalm 118, it also says this. It says, when you're hard pressed, I cry to the Lord. And you brought me into a spacious place. I pray that in this year of 2021, that when you are feeling like you're hard pressed, that you will turn to the Lord. You will cry out to the Lord. And it says, and he can, and he can bring you into a spacious place. I like the way that that puts that there. It kind of releases the pressure upon you. Sometimes when, when you're pressed, you feel the pressure coming down upon you. You know, when you cry out to the Lord, he takes you into a spacious place. He lifts the burdens off your shoulders. He is our God. He loves us. He loves you. And he will make a way for you. It says here, the Lord is with me. I will not be afraid. If you listen to too much TV at the moment and everything that's being said, you will be afraid. And the Bible says that our hearts can fail us for fear. But let me tell you and remind you today that we need to put our trust in God. It says here, the Lord is with me. I will not be afraid. 
What can mere mortals do to me? The Lord is with me. He is my helper. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in humans. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to put trust in princes. The Bible is so full of things that we need to hear, that you need to hear. Let me tell you, I, I've been reading the Bible for, what, I don't know, 60 years. And I've read some things many times, but when I read them, they are like fresh air to me. They make me feel so good inside when I read that when I'm hard pressed. I tell you, I've had a few moments in 2020 when I was hard pressed. And I'm sure that you have had some moments in 2020 when you were hard pressed. But let's believe in this year 2021 that God can take us into a spacious place. I don't know what that creates in your mind, but it just creates me where, where things, are, the, the pressure's just taken away. And I can just start to breathe. I want to ask you not to let the year 2021 slip by. I've been guilty of that sometimes. I can remember 21 years ago in this church, we made a big sign and put it outside, welcome to the new millennium. And I can hardly believe that 20... Yeah, we were painting it. Yeah? We were painting it. Anybody else here on that day? And, and I cannot believe that 21 years have gone. Some of them have been great years, and I, I believe that the Lord has really blessed us. But what I want to say is, don't let the year 2021 slip by. Make sure that you set out some objectives on what you really want to achieve. And I really believe that God can fill, can fill the desires of your hearts. Shall we read 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 13 to 16? So we're just coming to an end now. I want you to hear what Peter was saying here. He said, so I, I'm going to put a little bit into this. Is that okay? So it's like if Peter was saying, so in 2021, think clearly. In 2021, exercise self-control. And look forward to the gracious salvation that will come to you when Jesus Christ is revealed in the world. So you must live in 2021 as God's obedient children. In 2021, don't slip back into your old ways of living to satisfy your own desires. You didn't know any better then, but now, in 2021, you must be holy in everything you do, just as God who chose you is holy. For the scripture says, you must be holy. I want you to live in a permanent state of excitement in looking ahead. And Paul's, uh, Paul, he's called Carl actually. Carl said about getting to heaven, and he was talking about getting to heaven. And yes, absolutely, we're excited about that. And so what he's saying here is live in a permanent state of hope and excitement, not looking back, but pressing on forward into those things that God is preparing for you both in heaven, but also for you to do in this year 2021. Don't slip back into your old ways, but live a holy life. Psalm 118, finish with this. We have been blessed, and we bless you from the house of the Lord. So from our church, we pray that you have the most blessed year ever, and that we together can achieve the things that God wants to achieve in this year, 2021. Pray you really are blessed. Amen. Let's just pray. Heavenly Father, we do commit this year to you. Lord, we commit each other to you. Lord, we don't know what this year holds. Lord, we don't know what, what's, what exactly is going to happen. But Lord, we know this. Lord, that you never leave us nor forsake us. 
And Lord, that, that as, as Carl read, that you have plans to prosper us and plans to, to bless us. And Lord, we know that, that nothing will stop your will and purpose being fulfilled. Lord, I pray that you help us to do that, Lord. I pray that we'll fix our eyes on you. Lord, I pray that we'll not remember the failures of the past, but Lord, we look forward to the exciting blessings that you have and hold for us in the days and future ahead. So Lord, we commit this year to you and we ask you to pour out your blessings with, which, is, which are unlimited. Pray that you bless us, Lord, in such a way, Lord, that we'll be overwhelmed by it, Lord. And I pray that the power of your Holy Spirit, Lord, will help us and strengthen us and keep us each day of this year. In 2021, we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay. Um, do we have any notices? Yeah. Jill? How did how did I know? Three thousand two hundred two hundred uh, yeah. provisions from bellies. One thousand one hundred meals. One thousand one hundred meals. And five hundred packed lunches. Five hundred packed lunches. So and that was just for Bob. So yeah. Another round of applause there, I think. Next Friday, the over 60 meals. Curry and rice. Contact Jill and she'll put you down. Can have collection or delivery? Saturday morning, uh, community Good. breakfast there. Saturday night. Full English breakfast. <laughs> No, <laughs> it's a <our> diet version. <laughs> Just the tomatoes. I only diet between meals anyway. Right, I don't think we have any other notices. There's a couple of birthdays after us, but we'll just finish with um, one song. What time are we on? Do we have time? Just time for one song. Would you like to stand and join us?
Lord, we thank you for your word to us today. And we thank you that we've been able to spend time in your presence. And we just pray that those words would um, filter down into our heart, into our spirit. And that we would be um, open and expecting your blessings. And looking for opportunities, Lord. um, To do your will and to do your work. And to receive your blessings throughout this whole year. We pray you'd prosper every one of us, Lord, spiritually um, as well as physically and mentally and emotionally and materially in every single way, Lord, and, and you'd bless us with opportunities to share those blessings with others. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, we have birthdays for Susie. And Liam? Which Liam is that? Does anyone know? Sorry? Oh, Liam's back in town. Well, he might be watching at home. So, should we sing a quick happy birthday for these people who aren't here? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear. directing you all oh where is she she's ready to direct you out and squirt you on the way out as well <laughs> 